Hello everybody, now we are going to talk about the Doppler and its use in MSK ultrasound. Let me introduce our book, Ultrasound of the Musculoskeletal System. This book has been created for all those passionate about MSK ultrasound, more than 500 pages about anatomy and pathology. Inside the book, you will find amazing images of anatomy, sonoanatomy, and pathology. This will improve and facilitate your knowledge in ultrasound. If you want more information, take a look at mskroom.com. What is Doppler effect? Doppler effect was discovered by Johann Christian Doppler in 1846. He studied the frequencies of the sound and uh, the movement and uh, we are going to uh, explain the Doppler effect. If we have an emitter and a receptor, okay, the emitter is emitting a, a sound at a given frequency, a continuous frequency, and this, uh, the receptor is receiving this frequency without changes. It's the same frequency because there is no movement. There is no Doppler effect here. Second case, the emitter is moving. Is approaching the receptor. It's always emitting at the same frequency, but the frequency that the receptor receives is different, is higher. Okay? So when the emitter is approaching or the receptor is approaching the emitter, okay, if, if it uh, works in the both uh, sides, then the frequency increases. Third case, we have again the emitter uh, emitting at the same frequency, but now it's going away the receptor is moving away the receptor okay so it's always emitting at the same frequency but the frequency the receptor receives is different is lower is the frequency decreases okay so when they approach the frequency increases when they go away the frequency decreases okay this is the doppler effect and let's take a look uh, here at this uh, example of the frequencies the classic car approaching and going away Listen, you can see this is the, uh, the car approaching, so the frequency is increasing and then it, it goes away and the frequency decreases. Okay? This is the classic example of the Doppler effect. And uh, how it works in the body. We need uh, an emitter, which will be the probe, and the probe will also be the, the receiver of the, of the ultrasound. Okay, because it needs, uh, it needs to analyze the sound. So, first of all, the probe. It emits a frequency and hits a vessel. Okay? So, it emits the frequency against a vessel. Vessel has inside erythrocytes, blood cells, which are moving. So, these blood cells, okay, these uh, red blood cells, will receive a different frequency because they are moving. Okay? These red blood cells emit an echo, and because they are moving, the frequency of the echo will also be different. And this echo will be analyzed and received by the probe. So, uh, the frequency emitted will be different of the frequency received, and it depends on the movement or the flow inside the vessel. So this is the Doppler effect inside the body. Okay, what types of Doppler do we have in MSK? We have continuous wave Doppler and pulsed wave Doppler. The first one, the continuous wave Doppler, the probe emits continuously a constant emission and a constant receiving of this emission. Okay? So this is continuous. All the flow below, sorry, all the flow below the beam is analyzed. It can, there is no limit of uh, velocity uh, of the speed of the flow, so it's indicated for very high speed flows. For example, the cardiac, the heart flows. Okay, uh, and you can also check the sorry, the spectral in which will be the curve of the flows. Okay, but this continuous this continuous wave Doppler will be used in a cardiac ultrasound, not in MSK ultrasound. In MSK ultrasound, we have the pulse wave Doppler. This type of Doppler has two subtypes, the color Doppler and the power Doppler. 
you can use both in MSK but as you can see uh, you will see just now power doppler is the most commonly used what is color doppler color doppler measures the mean frequency shift and is an indication of the speed flow okay it detects the flow the direction, usually with a color when it approaches and a different color when it goes away. When it approaches, usually it is red, and when it goes away, it's usually uh, blue. So it has the, it distinguishes uh, the direction of the flow. It uh, changes with isonation angle. So uh, as uh, the angle is, pro uh, is very close to 90 degrees, the flow will be Worst, uh, we, we worse detected. Okay, so that's why, and that's because when you use the probe in a 90 degrees angle, the um, red blood cells are not approaching or going away. The probe are passing at the same distance. Okay, so the frequency emitted by the probe will be the same as the frequency received, and that's why the flow detected when the vessels are at 90 degrees is not a, a good flow. To help seeing these vases when you cannot change the angle of the probe, you can use the steering of the box. And once you have steered the box, then you are changing the angle of the, of the beam. And <clears throat> you can change this 90 degrees and have a better view of the flow inside the vessel. This is only for color Doppler. And what about power Doppler? Power Doppler measures the total amplitude of the Doppler. It's, um, it's um, a me measure of the density of, er of the erythrocytes, the intensity of the flow, basically. It usually doesn't detect the flow direction, so you, you, you usually have one color when you're using power Doppler. Now new machines analyze the power Doppler and analyze color Doppler both at the same time and makes power Doppler with two colors, but usually you will find only one color in most uh, majority majority of the machines. It's independent of the insonation angle and is more sensitive to detect uh, 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 flow vessels in small vessels, uh, 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 very low flow vessels, sorry, slow flow in small vessels. So because it's more sensitive and because it, uh, the angle of the insonation doesn't seem to affect uh, the, the flow, the image, sorry, is the perfect, uh, the, the perfect type of Doppler for musculoskeletal ultrasound. And what is it for? What, uh, why do you use Doppler in SK ultrasound? Because it's interesting to check the small vessels inside some structures. For example, inside the tendons, uh, this uh, vascularization is telling us that it's a, a tendinopathy, a degenerative tendinopathy, and this neovascularization is usually thought that this has, uh, has to do with symptoms or prognosis. It's not very clear, we are st still studying it, but uh, it's interesting to check because normal tendons usually don't have vascularization. Of course, it's very important when you have a synovitis. Synovitis, uh, usually with inflammatory reaction, is plenty of vascularization of vessels. And when the, uh, the panus has no uh, vascularization, it's a cold one, it's not active. So in, uh, arthropathies, in uh, inflammatory arthropathies or even in septic arthropathies, uh, the use of Doppler is telling us the, the, how active is it, it is. Also, enthesitis will be analyzed with the Doppler and is telling the activity of this enthesis. And it can be measured, the, uh, the, uh, it can be monitorized the treatment responsiveness to some biologic agents in the rheumatic conditions. So, if the treatment is going very well, then the vascularization will be the less. It helps in the, some tumors characterization, for example, in this giant uh, cell tumor, you can see some amount of vases, so you can, uh, be, uh, you, uh, it helps in some tumors and it, of course you can use uh, to detect thrombosis or obstructions of the vessels. Very very useful in some um, muscle injuries or other pathologies when some um, pathologies of the vessels will, uh, will mimic 
uh, NSK conditions. But to have a good Doppler image, you need to uh, set some adjustments, okay? And these are the most important. The first one is the PRF, the Pierce Repetition Frequency. You can see here, okay? So you can adjust this, this setting and uh, it depends on the flow uh, speed of, uh, you are, uh, of the vessels you are measure, measuring, okay? If you uh, measure uh, small vessels with uh, slow flows, you need to uh, decrease the PRF. Uh, usually in musculoskeletal ultrasound, you will use PRF between 4, 5 or 6, depending on the machines okay, and depending on the vessels. Higher PRFs are better for uh, bigger vessels, okay? but when you are ap applying this higher PRF, you will see how small vessels uh, decrease their Doppler. Okay? So the sensitivity in small vessels decrease. And if you use very, very low PRF settings, then artifacts appear. So be careful not to decrease a lot the PRF. You can use the box. Uh, you will place the box when you, where, where you, can, you want to investigate the Doppler. And you also need to adjust the size of the, of the box. You may think that bigger size is better because you see more vessels, but when you use bigger, uh, bigger boxes, then the frame rate this, uh, um, and there, uh, uh, decreases, okay? Flow rate decreases, and you will have a, a, um, a different image with uh, a, um, a slow flows, okay? Uh, if, you, if you want to have a good image, a good uh, movement of the Doppler, just you need to um, get the box uh, smaller because then the frame rate will increase and you will have a better video or better movement of the Doppler. And don't forget to steer the box when you have these uh, 90 degrees these perpendicular vessels to have a better view when you are in color Doppler. The gain is the brightness of the Doppler and as you can imagine when you have low gains then the Doppler will be uh, less sensitive and when you have higher gains then some uh, artifacts will appear. So the best way to ma manage gain is to slowly increase gain till you have uh, the first artifacts then, then uh, decrease a little bit uh, till the artifacts disappear and you will have the better gain you, you can have. And to finish, frequency. Frequency is not so important, okay? And it's the same behavior as in MSK and in B mode, okay? Higher frequencies for superficial vessels, lower frequencies for deep vessels. And um, sometimes in this example, you can see how if we have uh, 12 megahertz, we, you will have a good view of these superficial vessels. And when you turn to 8 megahertz, the sensitivity decreases and you will have a different image. So higher frequencies, 12 MHz, 8 MHz, it changes. Sometimes interesting when you are checking deep vessels, then decrease frequency or very, very superficial vessels, then increase frequency. And how is Doppler measure? You need a measure, you need to, to um, to write the amount of Doppler and how can we do that. So we follow the Amaract recommendations and grade one, sorry, grade zero is normal. If you can, you see here the sign, the synovium, okay, um, thick and hypochoic, and you can see there's no um, vessels inside, there's no vascularization. So this is the grade zero. Grade one and small, a few vessels appear, okay, grade Two, it's a moderate uh, vascularization, <clears throat> usually um, less than a half of the all the synovium, uh, synovium studied, and grade three severe with more than half of the synovium studied with vascularization. So normal, zero, one minimal, two moderate, three severe. If you want, and that's, that's all I wanted to tell you about the, the uh, Doppler, 
thank you very much.